In the mid-2000s, a quiet shift began in the world of software. For years, browsers like Firefox had been plagued by elusive memory bugs, dangerous glitches that could crash systems or open security holes. Many of these flaws came from low-level code written in C++, a powerful but unforgiving language. In 2006, a Mozilla engineer named Graydon Hoare decided to try something bold, to create a systems programming language that wouldn't suffer those same pitfalls. He imagined something with the speed and control of C++, but with built-in guarantees of safety and concurrency. It was an ambitious dream, a technology from the past come to save the future from itself, as Hoare would later describe it. Hoare worked in secret, drawing inspiration from decades-old ideas in computer science. He revisited proven concepts from languages of the 70s and 80s and revived them with fresh urgency. He called it Rust, a compiled concurrent safe systems programming language designed to deliver both efficiency and reliability. But the road from idea to reality would stretch nearly a decade and Rust would evolve through multiple eras, each marked by radical change, hard lessons and a growing community of believers. Rust began as a personal experiment Graydon Hoare, then working at Mozilla, started building it in 2006 out of frustration with the tools he was using. He wrote the first compiler in OCaml, about 38,000 lines of code, entirely by himself. It wasn't open source yet, just Hoare and a vision. That vision included ambitious research ideas, type state analysis to check if variables had been initialized, a pure keyword borrowed from functional programming promising functions without side effects, and a basic garbage collector for automatic memory management. But memory safety was always the top priority. No null pointers, no dangling references, no undefined behavior. Syntax came later. Early Rust was terse and strange, but semantics were what mattered. By 2009, Hoare had a rough but working prototype, and his colleagues at Mozilla began to take notice. Among them, Brendan Eich, Mozilla's chief architect and the creator of JavaScript, who played a key leadership role in the development of Firefox. Mozilla was desperate to avoid more memory safety bugs. Rust offered a way out. In 2009, Mozilla officially backed the project. The one-man experiment was about to become something bigger. With Mozilla's support, Rust transformed into a team effort. Hoare was joined by engineers and open source contributors. They jokingly called their office the Nerd Cave. The first big leap? Self-hosting. By 2010, the Rust compiler was rewritten in Rust itself, a huge milestone. Rust's breakthrough concept, ownership, was starting to take shape. Every value had a single owner, and the compiler enforced clear rules for borrowing and moving memory. That meant entire categories of bugs, like use after free or data races, could be caught at compile time. Not everything survived. The obst keyword for objects? Gone. Type state? Removed. Rust was shedding features that didn't serve its core goals. By January 2012, Rust 0.1 was released. For the first time, the world could try it. Rough around the edges, but promising. A community was forming. Before we continue, a quick but essential note, because shipping fast, interactive apps isn't just about systems-level performance. Enter Convex, sponsor of this video, a full-stack backend as a service that pairs beautifully with Rust's discipline and speed. If Rust gives you memory safety, fearless concurrency, and zero-cost abstractions, Convex brings the back-end muscle to make your app dynamic, real-time, and scalable, without boilerplate or infrastructure yak shaving. The real magic? Convex Chef, an AI app builder that doesn't spit out throwaway snippets. Chef understands full-stack architecture. It auto-wires auth, file storage, background jobs, and real-time sync on top of Convex's reactive data model. You describe the app. Chef builds it, fully functional, Real-time, ready to deploy. Try it yourself. Head to convex.link slash codesource. Describe the app you want and see how far you can go without writing a single line of back-end code while keeping your core logic in Rust. Convex and Rust together, that systems-level rigor meeting back-end intelligence. Now let's get back to the Rust story. This phase was not without its internal friction, as Rust shed features like type state and green-threaded concurrency, some early contributors and adopters pushed back, there were spirited debates over what Rust should be, whether it was becoming too minimal or too complex in its type system. Some felt that removing user-facing conveniences in favor of compiler guarantees risked alienating developers. But the team pressed on, believing that long-term clarity and safety were worth the short-term confusion. Now came the hard part, refinement. Between 2012 and 2014, Rust reinvented itself, 
the team doubled down on ownership and removed anything that didn't align. The garbage collector? Gone. Built-in concurrency features? Move to libraries. The goal, make Rust leaner, faster, and more flexible. Concurrency now used external libraries for message passing and threading. Safety came from the type system alone. Rust was still unstable. Nightly releases broke code constantly. But the team embraced this churn. It was how they learned. Mozilla's servo browser engine became a testbed. Its developers pushed Rust to the limits and gave vital feedback. In 2013, Hoare stepped down, and with his departure came a new leadership model. A core team, sub-teams, and a formal RFC process. Rust's governance became collaborative and open. Developers from many backgrounds joined, C++ users wanted performance, scripting language fans wanted tooling, functional programmers brought type system expertise. This diversity shaped Rust into a language that bridged paradigms. As the team approached version 1.0, tensions rose. Some developers felt that the language still wasn't ready, while others feared that waiting too long would stall adoption. Compromises were made, features like async await were deferred, discussions about syntax polish versus backward compatibility became heated. The pressure to hit version 1.0 while preserving Rust's integrity forced hard decisions, decisions that shaped the language's future. After nearly 10 years, Rust was ready to go stable. In May 2015, Rust 1.0 launched. A promise was made, no more breaking changes. From now on, Rust would prioritize stability. Semantic versioning and epochs allowed the language to grow without breaking existing code. The ecosystem exploded. Crates.io launched. In one year, over 5,000 packages were published. More than 1,400 people contributed to the compiler. Tooling became a top priority. Rust FMT for formatting, Clippy for linting, great error messages, and first-class IDE support. A code of conduct ensured Rust's community stayed inclusive and kind. Beginners were welcomed. Contributions were celebrated. Rust wasn't just a language, it was a movement. With Rust 1.0 stable, the language matured beyond its compiler and syntax. Several threads shaped its ecosystem. Rust allows low-level control through unsafe blocks, explicit zones where developers can bypass safety checks. These sections are marked clearly and remain isolated, ensuring most of the codebase stays safe by default. Rust's package manager, Cargo, brought seamless dependency management and streamlined testing. It was a revelation for developers used to complex C and C++ build systems. Crates.io, the public package registry, helped Rust ecosystem thrive. Rust made Rustdoc and inline code examples first-class citizens. Examples are tested automatically, making documentation trustworthy. Unit testing is built in, fostering a strong test culture. After long anticipation, async await syntax landed in stable Rust in 2019. Tokyo emerged as the dominant async runtime powering high-performance, scalable applications. Rust became a favorite for WebAssembly due to its performance, safety, and small binaries. Tools like WasmPack and WasmBindGen simplified integration. In 2022, the Linux kernel accepted Rust as a second official language, starting with experimental modules. This historic milestone validated Rust's place in the system's programming world. Tools like Cargo Audit and Cargo Crev reinforced Rust's proactive stance on security. The community emphasized minimal, auditable dependencies. Rust was voted the most loved language in Stack Overflow surveys from 2016 through 2023. This consistent recognition reflected a growing global trust in Rust's safety, ergonomics, and community. In 2016, Rust began to appear in production. Mozilla shipped a Rust component in Firefox 45, an MP4 parser. It ran over a billion times without a single crash. Dropbox adopted Rust for key infrastructure. They chose it for performance and safety in a massive migration to in-house data centers. It now quietly powers the storage of hundreds of millions of users. Creators of Ember.js used Rust in Skylight, a performance monitoring tool. In four years, it crashed just twice, and one wasn't Rust's fault. Rust started appearing everywhere at Cloudflare, at AWS, in web services, kernels, games. Even the US government endorsed memory-safe languages like Rust. But Rust's story isn't about hype. It's about persistence, a language forged through relentless refinement, a community that valued safety without compromise. From a lone Mozilla engineer's dream to a global movement, Rust has proved one thing. We don't have to choose between control and safety. We can have both. Rust is not just a language. It's how things ought to work.